Hi everyone, I'm Gordon from Cameralabs.com and this is my review of the new Fujifilm Instax Share SP3. The SP3 is a portable instant photo printer that's designed to wirelessly connect to your iOS or Android phone or to compatible Fujifilm digital cameras. Now, Fujifilm's done instant photo printers before, but so far they've all used their original Instax Mini format. Meanwhile, the SP3 is their first model that can output on the newer Instax Square format, where the images may be the same height as Instax Mini, but they're square, so they're wider. In fact, when you just look at them side by side here, the square one looks so much bigger. The actual photo itself, the active image area, measures 2.4 by 2.4 inches, or 62 by 62 millimeters, if, like me, you prefer metric. Now let's talk about money. The SP3 printer itself, at the time I made this video, costs about 200 US dollars. Compare that to about 250 dollars for the SQ10 instant camera. That was the first to use the square format film. But you still have to look at those Instax mini cameras that you can get for about 60, 70 or 80 dollars each. Meanwhile, the prints themselves, because it's a fairly new format, are still currently fairly expensive. You're looking at about 80 pence to $1.30 per print, so you've got to be pretty sure that you want that picture when you press the button. The SP3 is a pretty simple looking device with a minimum of controls. After all, this is a printer that's designed to be operated direct from your phone or your Fujifilm camera. It's entirely battery operated, there's a rechargeable lithium ion pack in here and it's chargeable over USB by connecting it to a port behind this flap. Now you cannot connect this USB port directly to say a laptop or a camera and print over cable. This is a wireless printer only that's only designed to print from your phone or from compatible Fujifilm cameras. On the front of the device you'll see the slot where the prints come out and some lights that I'll show you later on. On one side we've got a reprint button which allows you to immediately reprint the last picture that was sent to it and it actually stores it in internal memory. If you like you can erase that picture though. On the other side a power button and underneath here a flap that opens up so you can actually load the film. I'm going to do that right now. So here's a pack of Instax Square film. These come in packs of 10, and again, you're looking at about 80 pence to $1.30 per print. Now, like other Instax cartridges, you'll notice there's a yellow marker here. You have to line that up with the yellow marker on the actual printer or camera, if that's what you're loading. That goes inside. You clip it shut, and you're good to go. Now, the first thing that happens, like all the Fujifilm Instax cameras, is this protective cover comes out first, just pull that out, get rid of it, and you're good to go. Now if I power up the printer by pressing this button for a couple of seconds, you'll see these lights on the front. This first green light here indicates the charge on the printer. And per charge you're looking at about 160 prints, that's quite a few, and about three hours to fully recharge it. This changes colour as the battery begins to deplete. Underneath here, you'll see 10 bright LEDs. This indicates how many prints you've got left. I've just loaded a new film, so I've got 10 prints left. Let's get started. The Instax SP3 is designed to print wirelessly from your phone, and Fujifilm has designed the Instax Share app. That's available for iOS and Android devices. I'm running it from my Galaxy S7 Android device here. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you just while we're talking is the real-time template, because templates are what make this app quite fun. It allows you to frame your images in certain ways or add various pieces of information. Now, what this is gonna let me do is take a selfie. Let's do it here, the man at work. Incidentally, filming this video with a Sony A6000 camera. I'm gonna okay that, and it says, do you wanna print that as it is? Yeah, why not? Looks fine to me. Now, you'll see a brief flash there saying applying a tele intelligence filter. This is like a kind of auto levels control that the app automatically applies if you want it to. It can really help boost uh, some images, although if you're already happy with the way your image looks, say if it's one that you've transferred to your phone from another camera, then you may wanna turn that off. And we can look at different template options here. I can have it over my face, or I can have it at the bottom there. I'm gonna connect and print, and you can see that the phone is now wirelessly looking for the printer over Wi-Fi, it's found it. So it's actually intelligently switched from my home wireless network to that of the printer. It's gonna send that image to it. Now let's see it come out.
Now the actual printing process takes about 13 seconds and at this point this print is dry, it's, you can hand it to somebody and move on if you're in a portable environment, but it does take a short while for that image to develop and gradually appear. You're probably seeing the image first appearing after about maybe 20 or 30 seconds, but it won't reach full density probably for about two or three minutes, even longer in some cases. Here's some prints that I made earlier by the way, so you can have a look at them in the background. I'm going to pop this photo down here and you can watch that develop. Also notice if I make any jump cuts to cover up any mistakes if that picture suddenly appears. Okay, printing is complete. Let's go back, it's restoring my wireless LAN settings. Okay, at this point I can take another picture with the camera, but I actually now want to see how the app prints pictures that are already on the phone. And this is the main way that you'll probably be using this uh, device. And of course, while it's designed to print directly from the phone, as long as you can get an image on the phone, you'll be able to print it. So if you have uh, another digital camera, say it's not a Fujifilm camera that's directly compatible, so you've got a Sony or a Canon or a Nikon, as long as you can get that image onto your phone, you'll be able to print it. So let's see how that works. So this is uh, currently looking at my option to actually just browse the images that are on my phone itself. So you can see it's fascinating insight into the way that my mind and my gallery works. This has got some work pictures, some screenshots, some pictures actually from the Instax app itself. But where for me it gets more interesting is connecting it to your social accounts. You'll see the Instagram and Facebook icons here. I'm going to tap Instagram and have a look at my Instagram stream. Now this can take a few seconds to appear the first time, so I sped that up. Hey, that print's coming on really nicely now. <laughs> so this is my Instagram feed, and if you like my photography, you can follow me at Camera Labs. That's where to find me. Now let's have a look at some pictures that we might want to print out, because this has got quite a cool trick that it can do. I'm going to go for this big letter S. Now you'll notice that it's already overlaid some information at the bottom. This is one of the templates. You'll see there's my social profile icon, the date that I posted the picture, a little bit of the description, and the number of likes, or at least the number of likes when I previewed this picture. Now, this is pretty cute. It means that you can actually identify this as a, a social print. But if you prefer, we can go to the template options here and switch that off. So you can go for a clean print direct from your Instagram account, or you can go for the one with a profile pic. Now you may have noticed that the lights have gone off on the printer. It just send itself to sleep to power safe. So I'm just gonna power it back up again. There we go, the lights have come on. And I'm quite happy with the way that looks. So I'm gonna okay that, connect to the printer and print it. It's connected to it and it's gonna send that image. And here it comes. Now while that comes out, I'm going to show you a couple of other ones I've done with the social information on it. Here are two pictures that I took on my uh, recent vacation to the uh, United States. There's a Stella's uh, J bluebird and here's a, uh, a type of uh, lizard that I saw in the American National Parks. And you can see my social profile icon, the date that I posted them. Number of likes, it looks pretty small, you can hardly see it, but it has printed them on there. So that's pretty cute. I like the way that that can actually integrate your social information. Here is this other print. I'm going to put it down here to develop. Meanwhile, let's have a look at this one because it's almost finished. It's the one that I took earlier, the selfie with my phone. And you can see it's got my location as Brighton. It's got the date and it's got the current weather, which is a bit variable, I have to say. Very British weather for this time of year. But at this point you might be thinking, do you know what, this is all very well printing my profile picture on it, but you know, what about the pictures of other people that I follow on Instagram? Can I print their pictures? If you were to go to the Instagram page here, you can only see your own images. Now, you cannot browse anyone else's account from here. What you can do is use an app to save an image onto your phone and then you can print it very easily from this section. There is, however, another way that you can access other people's pictures using the app. And that's using the tag print option. Now here I can enter a hashtag and search for something specific. Now I'm a big fan of the Fujiholics account and Fujiholics ask you to tag them Fujiholics if you want to be featured on their stream. And here they are, 70,000 posts. 
And these are all the images that have been tagged with the hashtag Fujiholics. Now, these aren't necessarily ones which will appear on the Fujiholics stream, so I am taking a bit of a risk looking at these. It's basically any image that has been tagged with Fujiholics, but I can tap those images and print them out from this app if I want. How about this nice one of uh, this tree? That looks great. However, what you'll notice is that the actual person's social details are not there. And if I was to go to the template, that Instagram template is no longer available. So I can't print their little cute profile icon or number of likes or information. So that's something that I think Fujifilm could hopefully improve in a later version of this app. Going back to the main screen, you'll notice there's a reprint option here. This lets you access the most recent images that you printed for immediate reprinting. Alternatively, you can press the reprint button on the device itself and that will print a copy of the last picture that was sent to it. Now, if for some reason you don't want someone to access that picture, maybe it's private or there's some security issue, then you can press and hold the reprint button and it will delete it from its memory. So there's no problem there. Now, you can also have a look at some other templates. If I go to the My Templates option, you can see ones here with text on them, which, of course, you can change. So if I choose this one here, OK, so let's add a picture to that. I'm going to go for this one of the Empire State Building and I'm going to tap inside here and I can actually change this text. So instead of share, I have sunset and then I'm going to OK that. And then if I want to edit this other text, I just tap here, Instax Share, SP3. I could say Sunset in New York. And that's that. Now, I can do some other things to this image as well. I can adjust basically the, uh, the text size as well. And I can adjust the color and I can adjust the justification. There's a massive amount of things that I can do there i'm going to okay that now at this point i've not shown you the filters that i can apply at the moment there's no filter applied to this image but i can go for the intelligence filter and this is again that auto levels one i was telling you about earlier and in this instance i feel it's really kind of washed out the image a bit so i'm going to turn off the intelligence filter uh, if i prefer i can go into black and white or i can go into sepia there's no others to choose from but you know what i think the no filter option there looks pretty good i can also make some custom adjustments here i can adjust the brightness just the contrast and the saturation, which is the amount of color. And if I've really mucked it up, I can reset them all back to the middle. But you know what? I'm gonna give that a little bit of extra saturation, tad higher contrast. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna connect and print to the SP3. And hopefully in a few seconds, that print will appear. So here it comes. Right, we'll pop this one down here. But there's more you can do with templates than just simply put text on your pictures. If I choose this picture from my Instagram stream here again, I can go to templates and choose the collage option. And this lets me put more than one image on the print. I can have two horizontally or vertically. I can have three again, horizontally or vertically. I can have four. Or I can also have nine. This is uh, unique to the SP3 because of its square pictures. Let's go for that square bit. And as you can see, I can change any of these pictures. We'll leave the kitten there. But for this one, we'll go back to my stream. How about me? There's me taking a picture of the kitten. It was just like that. Uh, we can have uh, me <laughs> scary at Halloween. And uh, how about this uh, bit of graffiti? Gosh, that is, who wouldn't want that composite print? It's perfect. And here it's sending the print again to the SP3. 10 to 15 seconds later, that print is emerged and we can leave that to develop. While it is developing, here's that one that I made earlier, Sunset in New York. I should have probably done that text a different color, shouldn't I? Oh well, you can see the effect nonetheless. The templates are not just about squeezing more pictures onto one print. If you like, you can spread out a picture over more than one print. Maybe you would like a, a nice tall version. So again, you go to the templates and you could go for photo split. Very good for accentuating nice tall buildings. Or in classic Blue Peter style, 
Here's one I made earlier of the Brighton Pier. This was actually taken uh, with the Fujifilm X-Pro2. And this is an image that I stored on my phone. Again, any images you store on your phone can be printed very easily from the app. And this one I split over two pictures, so you can go for that if you prefer. You'll also notice this limited template here. If I tap this, it allows me to caption it and also say that this is print one of however many. So I can increase that number and say, look, you know, I'm only going to do two or three of these and then add a caption on there. So that makes it a little bit more unique if you're printing out more than one for other people. As I mentioned earlier, you can wirelessly print directly from certain Fujifilm cameras. The first model that was compatible with the SP3 is the XE3, which you see here. My own review sample had since been returned to Fujifilm, so I popped into Clock Tower cameras in Brighton, who generously let me borrow theirs. Thanks guys, great shop to go to whether you're after a brand new camera or something second hand. Now, connecting the camera to the printer is pretty easy. The first thing you need to do is enter the wireless SSID and password into the menus, after which you can just choose Instax printing directly from the playback menu. And here you can see it trying to find the printer over Wi-Fi. It's done that. And now you're allowed to actually choose a square crop on the image. That's why you need that firmware update so it knows the shape of the prints. So I can just move that left or right until I get the crop that I want. And then I click OK to send it. I should apologize at this point that the XC3 isn't quite in focus. I was having a couple of technical issues with the closest focusing distance of my filming camera, but you get to see it in action anyway. And now it's sending the image wirelessly from the camera to the printer. Now, if you don't have an XC3, don't worry. By the end of 2017, Fujifilm promises a firmware update to the XT2, the XT20, the X-Pro2, the XT1, the X100F, and even the medium format GFX 50X. And you can see here that print has now emerged and is just waiting to become fully developed. Thanks again, Clocktail Cameras, for letting me borrow your camera. Now, printing directly from Fujifilm cameras is a really nice application for the SP3. I can really see it being used at events where you could, of course, use an instant camera, but using a proper X-series body lets you have so much greater control over lenses, flashes, and, of course, deliver much better quality. So the SP3 is a fun printer to use whether you're outputting directly from your phone or from a compatible Fujifilm digital camera. In fact, I'd say the only real downside to it is the cost per print. Again, you're looking at about 80 pence or $1.20 to produce one of these small square prints that measures 2.4 by 2.4 inches. Now, if you're only after a low cost photo printer at home, you should be considering models like Canon Selfie CP1300. This produces postcard size prints, and this is one you can see right next to it. These measure six by four inches. They cost roughly one third of the price per print, and they emerge fully developed in less than a minute. But the device itself is much larger. You can get a battery to make it portable, but it's an optional extra. And the printer itself really needs to be placed on a flat, dust-free surface while printing. It really is a printer that you should leave at home or in an office, or if you're at an event, you have to have it on a table. In contrast, the Instax XP3 is much smaller and lighter. It's truly portable with its lithium ion rechargeable battery pack and it works absolutely anywhere, handheld. It's something you really would consider throwing into a bag or a pocket and taking out with you. And there's no denying the appeal of watching an instant photo gradually appear before you. So I'd recommend it if you're after a truly portable photo printer or if you actually just really have fallen in love with the instant print format. Fujifilm camera owners will also enjoy the direct wireless printing, which again is perfect for events where a basic instant camera just isn't delivering the control or quality you desire. As always, head on over to CameraLabs.com if you're after my reviews of cameras, printers and anything else to do with photography. And if you like this video, please do subscribe. It really helps when you subscribe on YouTube. And if you really, really like what I do, you can buy me a coffee. Cheers. Bye bye.